Question 42 of Summa Theologica Secunda Secundae, Treatise on the Theological Virtues, The Virtue of Charity. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Summa Theologica Secunda Secundae, Treatise on the Theological Virtues, The Virtue of Charity by St. Thomas Aquinas, translated by the Fathers of the English Dominican Province. Question 42 of Sedition in Two Articles We must now consider sedition, under which head there are two points of inquiry. First, whether it is a special sin. Second, whether it is a mortal sin. First article. Whether sedition is a special sin distinct from other sins. Objection 1. It would seem that sedition is not a special sin distinct from other sins. For according to Isidore, in his Etymologies 10, a seditious man is one who sows dissent among minds and begets discord. Now by provoking the commission of a sin, a man sins by no other kind of sin than that which he provoked. Therefore, it seems that sedition is not a special sin distinct from discord. Objection to, further, sedition denotes a kind of division. Now schism takes its name from scission, as stated above, in question 39, article 1. Therefore, seemingly, the sin of sedition is not distinct from that of schism. Objection 3. Further, every special sin that is distinct from other sins is either a capital vice or arises from some capital vice. Now sedition is reckoned neither among the capital vices nor among those vices which arise from them, as appears from the commentary on Job 31.45, where both kinds of vice are enumerated. Therefore, sedition is not a special sin distinct from the others. On the contrary, seditions are mentioned as distinct from other sins in 2 Corinthians 12.20. I answer that sedition is a special sin, having something in common with war and strife, and differing somewhat from them. It has something in common with them in so far as it implies a certain antagonism, and it differs from them in two points. First, because war and strife denote actual aggression on either side, whereas sedition may be said to denote either actual aggression or the preparation for such aggression. Hence a gloss on 2 Corinthians 12.20 says that seditions are tumults tending to fight, when to wit a number of people make preparations with the intention of fighting. Secondly, they differ in that war is, properly speaking, carried on against external foes, being, as it were, between one people and another, whereas strife is between one individual and another or between few people on one side and few on the other side, while sedition, in its proper sense, is between mutually dissentient parts of one people, as when one part of the state rises in tumult against another part. Wherefore, since sedition is opposed to a special kind of good, namely the unity and peace of a people, it is a special kind of sin. Reply to Objection 1. A seditious man is one who incites others to sedition, and since sedition denotes a kind of discord, it follows that a seditious man is one who creates discord, not of any kind, but between the parts of a multitude. And the sin of sedition is not only in him who sows discord, but also in those who dissent from one another inordinately. Reply to Objection 2. Sedition differs from schism in two respects. 
first because schism is opposed to the spiritual unity of the multitude notably ecclesiastical unity whereas sedition is contrary to the temporal or secular unity of the multitude for instance of a city or kingdom secondly schism does not imply any preparation for a material fight as sedition does but only for a spiritual descent reply to objection three sedition like schism is contained under discord since each is a kind of discord not between individuals but between the parts of a multitude second article whether sedition is always a mortal sin objection one it would seem that sedition is not always a mortal sin for sedition denotes a tumult tending to fight according to the gloss quoted above in article one but fighting is not always a mortal sin indeed it is sometimes just and lawful as stated above in question forty article one much more therefore can sedition be without a mortal sin objection to further sedition is a kind of discord as stated above in article one third reply now discord can be without mortal sin and sometimes without any sin at all therefore sedition can be also objection three further it is praiseworthy to deliver a multitude from a tyrannical rule yet this cannot easily be done without some dissension in the multitude if one part of the multitude seeks to retain the tyrant while the rest strive to dethrone him therefore there can be sedition without mortal sin on the contrary the apostle forbids seditions together with other things that are mortal sins in second corinthians twelve twenty i answer that as stated above in article one second reply sedition is contrary to the unity of the multitude notably the people of a city or kingdom now augustine says in on the city of god two twenty one that wise men understand the word people to designate not any crowd of persons but the assembly of those who are united together in fellowship recognized by law and for the common good wherefore it is evident that the unity to which sedition is opposed is the unity of law and common good whence it follows manifestly that sedition is opposed to justice and the common good therefore by reason of its genus it is a mortal sin and its gravity will be all the greater according as the common good which it assails surpasses the private good which is assailed by strife accordingly the sin of sedition is first and chiefly in its authors who sin most grievously and secondly it is in those who are led by them to disturb the common good those however who defend the common good and withstand the seditious party are not themselves seditious even as neither is a man to be called quarrelsome because he defends himself as stated above in question forty one article one reply to objection one it is lawful to fight provided it be for the common good as stated above in question forty article one but sedition runs counter to the common good of the multitude so that it is always a mortal sin reply to objection to discord from what is not evidently good may be without sin but discord from what is evidently good cannot be without sin and sedition is discord of this kind for it is contrary to the unity of the multitude which is a manifest good reply to objection three a tyrannical government is not just because it is directed not to the common good but to the private good of the ruler as the philosopher states in politics three five as well as in ethics eight ten consequently there is no sedition in disturbing a government of this kind unless indeed the tyrant's rule be disturbed so inordinately 
that his subjects suffer greater harm from the consequent disturbance than from the tyrant's government. Indeed, it is the tyrant, rather, that is guilty of sedition, since he encourages discord and sedition among his subjects, that he may lord over them more securely. For this is tyranny, being conducive to the private good of the ruler and to the injury of the multitude. End of question 42 Read by Michael Shane Craig Lambert, L.C.